Alright, let's talk to my uh, my buddies. Duncan. How you doing, Duncan? You enter Wu's cabin to find him moving through some sort of stretching routine. His muscles ripple as he flows tranquilly from one pose to the next. You look different, Simon. Do I? Yeah, like I flipped forward a few chapters instead of turning a page. I mean, you look like you, just not the you I knew. <laughs> it sounds like song lyrics. I have no idea what you're saying right now. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what you're saying right now. He chuckles. You sound like Lockjaw. Remember him? Never followed a damn thing I said. Good guy, but not a, not big on a thinking thing. Wu smiles. His teeth are perfect. I'm saying that you look more mature. Like you know more now. It's, it's written on your face. Takes getting used to. <laughs> are you... Like, is it because we've killed people? Is that what's going on, Duncan? <laughs> because, we've, we've, because we've killed people for money? It's weird thinking that you have eight years of experiences that I know nothing about. I used to know everything about you. You thought you knew everything about me, Duncan. The corner of his mouth pinches tight. I used to know how the world worked too. At least I thought I knew. Exactly. You thought you knew. Nobody ever really knows. Right. Like, you, you can get comfortable in a particular place. But if you ever get, like, disrupted from that comfort zone, nobody knows. Like, you don't know. So what about you? He gives you a once over. How are you doing? Good, actually, this is the life I always wanted. Kinda pissed at Raymond for getting us into this whole thing. I'm a little freaked out. I don't know the city at all. I feel like an alien. Not too good thinking about Raymond. About how you'd expect being better. Same as always. I'm probably not the same as always. Um, how are you doing? Good, actually, this is the life I always wanted. Is this the life I always wanted? Not really. Kinda pissed that Raymond, I'm not pissed. Little freaked out? I'm not freaked out. Not too good thinking about Raymond? Not thinking about Raymond. About how you'd expect, been better. Where well, I gotta tell you, you're good at running this crew assignment. But there's something I still don't completely understand. He picks up an ammo box and begins using it like a dumbbell. What do you get out of being a shadow runner? We didn't choose this life, Duncan. This life chose us. <laughs> Literally, your partner got shot in the head. And that's how we are shadow runners. We didn't choose that. <laughs> uh freedom, money, thrill, I get to hurt people for money. It's about seeing the world how it really is, underneath the veneer. I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. It's not for the money, not really. I mean, was I ever poor? I don't know. Freedom... I think freedom is a state of mind. You can be free anywhere. You can be free in prison, if you can control your own mind. Uh, I don't care about hurting people, not really, it's not really thrilling. It's about seeing the world about how, how it really is underneath the veneer. Most people don't want to know how the sausage is made. Shit's fucked up, man. Oh, shit's fucked up bad. You can see it. Right there from the outside. You don't... No need to look beneath the casing to see what's inside. You're not gonna like it. And even, even if you're the type that needs to know, the type that can't help but look into the abyss, what do you get out of it? Knowledge, Duncan. Odds are, you get nothing but a much shorter lifespan. The trade-off doesn't really seem worth it to me. And at the end of, of the day, what are you? A shadow runner, A disposable asset. Sinless. Slithering through the cracks of society. Doing jobs that are too dirty for the corpse to, to do themselves. You don't even appear on a corporate balance sheet. Yeah, except, but they need you, Duncan. <laughs> they need you to do the dirty work, because they can't do it themselves. Uh, you make it sound so unglamorous. I can I, I call my own shots, take the jobs I want. Not really. <laughs> I'm just doing anything Madame Cheng tells me to. 
Runners can be more than that. They can move their own agenda, fight the power. I've never heard a story where a Shadowrunner did something other than kill someone, steal something, or perpetrate some other sort of shady shit. Of course you don't hear about it. Nope. Who wants... Who would tell you, Duncan? Who would tell you? But good luck with that. Who watches you, waiting for you to say something? Uh... You thinking about getting chromed up? With Cyber, he shakes his head. Oh my god, how many times are you going to ask me that? <laughs> uh... <laughs> until you give me a satisfying answer. <laughs> I'm gonna keep asking until you show me some chrome. <laughs> until you give me a satisfying answer. Who grins? His teeth are blindingly white. I told you one time I was thinking about it when I was 13. Let it go. I'm not gonna pollute my body with that shit. You? <laughs> I'm a mage, remember? Chrome and magic go together like crude oil and peanut butter. Yeah, I guess you've got a point there. That's a good thing, by the way. Better to keep yourself whole and in touch with the world around you. I may not have magic, but I know that's true. Yeah, no, if I wasn't a mage, I'd be a machine, Duncan. I don't agree with you at all. I want to talk about you and me. I don't actually want to talk about you and me, but I, I want to see what the story says, right? He rests his eyes on you a moment, his face neutral. Yeah, yeah, I guess now's a good time as any. You start. You're not acting like the Duncan Wu that I grew up with. What made you decide to become a cop? Some cops just want to have power over others. Some cops want to make the world a better place. But that's hard, right? <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's... I sure, man. <laughs> because cops can't really solve the problems. Cops are like a bad date over a gaping wound. Like police, I mean, like, not cop, but like police work, right? You just. Because, the, like, what causes the crime is not anything that the police actually helps with, right? What causes crime? Poverty? Lack of opportunity? Right? And do, do cops fight poverty? No, cops fight crime. So they're not actually going to solve, cops are never actually going to solve the problem. They just try to not have it be out of control, is what they do. <laughs> so the cops that want to make a difference, they're, in, they're kind of in the wrong career, but you, you want them to be there because they're, they're the good guys. Some cops just want to be assholes and get away with it, so that's that's not cool. Uh, you're not acting like the Duncan Wu that I grew up with. What made you decide to be a cop? I needed structure, bad. You know that better than anyone. I was already hardcore when we met, Mr. Ultraviolence. I'd do anything to get a rise out of the guys I was rolling with. Gouging eyes, inverting knees, curb stomping. That shit got me cheers. I was like a pit fighter, bloodletting for the crowd, and I learned to enjoy it. That's not good. And also doesn't sound anything like him. Remember? When we first started out? He had panic attacks. Like, when he saw Carter get shot, he had panic attacks. This is completely not what we saw earlier. Right? You were... You were messing people up? And... And you learned to enjoy messing people up? Why did you have panic attacks? Well, like, why were you so reluctant to be a Shadowrunner? But I never learned how to block out the memories of their screams when I was lying in bed at night. Oh, okay, so no, he, he was... okay, never mind. <laughs> the guilt started eating me alive, and then I was scared to be alone with my thoughts, so I tried to drown them out with all the things that you drown things out with. Jesus, Duncan. <laughs> well, maybe don't do it then. You learn to enjoy beating, beating people up. And then you felt bad about it afterwards. Well, maybe don't do it then. <laughs> Wait, what, you... what the hell's wrong with you? Uh, I remember that you were pretty messed up when we met. He shakes his head sadly. Yeah, I was. But I got a lot better when we found a squad together. 
and even better later when we went to live with Ray. I was still a violent son of a bitch, but basically under control. That was because of you, SCKZ. You were the voice of reason and the brains. You can't rely on other people to be your brains, man. Me? The brains? <laughs> <laughs> Don't pretend you weren't the leader. You know how it was. When we ran the streets together, I was the muscle and you called the shot. You pointed and I hit. But later, after Ray got me some counselling, I realised I let you call the shots so that I wouldn't have to. Yeah, that's right. Because I knew that what I wanted was wrong. By following your lead, I was deflecting my own guilt onto you. I could just knock heads and walk away clean, you know? Don't look at me, I'm just doing what I'm told. Yeah, no, don't, don't rely on someone else to be your brains, man. And then you left. Without you there, I knew that I was in serious trouble. The poster boy for anger management issues. Raymond could provide a stable environment, a decent therapist, and money for prescriptions. But you know Raymond, he's an egghead engineer with a philanthropic streak, not a drill sergeant. And a drill sergeant was what I needed. No, it wasn't. Oh, this is so bad. Drill sergeants tend to make this sort of thing worse for most people. I needed structure and discipline in a way that the, that he couldn't offer me. I needed a cage to keep myself in line. So this like tough training thing more often than not it actually makes things worse. Uh, I, I, I don't agree with, with where the story is going. <laughs> Because I don't think this is real. I don't think this is real. So I found myself a cage of rules, a cage made of rules and procedures and training, Lone Star. Raymond helped me with my application and provided a decent character reference. I got in and it helped a lot. Lone Star got me where I needed to be and now it's all gone and you're back. Uh, like, a boot camp is not a substitute for therapy. I mean, if you get both, maybe maybe that'll work. I, I don't... I do not condone this story. Seems like Carter's death hit you pretty hard. We'll continue stretching. Yeah, she was a good one. We were a real team. Joining Lone Star helped me in all sorts of important ways, no doubt about it. I really embraced being a cop. I studied my ass off, but no matter how hard I worked, I was never more than a model cop with a brutal streak. There were plenty of assignments that were perfect for a big mean orc like me. Assignments that would have fed my need to hurt people. But I met Carter about a year in and she changed things. She talked about values and goals and priorities, and constructing the life that you want to live. She was a real trip. Oh, your partner gave you therapy. <laughs> you... Okay. See, this I believe more. Like, not, not, the, not the discipline, not the rules, but like having a decent person in your life. Although, you know, you, you can't... It is, it's, you're bas it's basically luck whether you meet someone like that, so it's not... She sounds wise. He pauses his stretching for a moment. Huh. Never thought about that word as a way to describe her. Wise. Wiser than you. From an outside perspective, I guess you'd say that. But to me, she was just grounded. That's what wisdom is, bro. She knew who she was, where she was, where she was going, and what got her there. Carter understood how the world worked, but comp compartmentalized it so she could focus on making a life for herself that made sense. She kept me focused. Again, you need to learn to do that for yourself. You can't rely on other people to do it for you. When Raymond asked me to meet him in Hong Kong, I had a feeling I was going to wind up going off the reservation if I didn't bring Kajra along. And now she's gone and here I am. You only took a step off the reservation. You can choose to step back too. <laughs> You're sinless now. It might be time to stop looking for someone to hold your leash, Duncan. We can handle it like we used to. I'll be the brains, you'll be the muscle. 
Let's, let's not do that. I say that you honor her memory by showing her how much you've learned. It might be time to stop looking for someone to hold your leash. That's true. That's true, but I don't want to say it. I say you honor her memory by showing her how much you've learned. Wu's mouth drops open and then curves into a grin. He shakes his head, still smiling. I'm sorry. Did Simon C just give me sage advice? Sounds like you did some growing up of your own. You've been waiting a long time to ask me about the night I left, haven't you? Wu chuckles and hooks his thumb in his belt. I guess I have, yeah. It's about what you were doing before you got thrown into that corp facility. You said you couldn't tell me where you were going. That it was on a needed-to-know basis. I get that, but how'd it go? I can't tell you that either. Let's just say it went fine, okay? <laughs> it didn't go fine. <laughs> really? These are the options? I thought the reason we got locked up is because it didn't go fine. <laughs> like, like everything went foobar and I got caught. Uh... I can't tell you that either. It, it didn't go fine. I don't think it went fine. I can't tell you that either. Whatever you say, Simon. <laughs> why did why doesn't the game let me... It went full bar, and I got locked up for a few years. <laughs> you ever think about when we were kids? He begins moving through some sort of pattern. Might be Tai Chi. I try not to. What are you talking about exactly? Uh, the old gang, Lockjaw, Double Tray, those guys. The time before we moved in Raymond and Miss Maloney. The old gang? I don't know about the old gang. You realize that old gang you're talking about were teenagers, right? Younger than Gobbit. Man, they felt so old back then. But Lockjaw couldn't have been more than 17 tops. And Double Tray, Double Tray was only 13 when... Who stops moving, drifts off for a moment. Why were you thinking of them? Did they die? <laughs> I miss the clarity of that life. Scrunch for food, defend your squad, watch each other's backs. Just thinking about that thing DT used to say. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't know where this is going, by the way. Will return to his patterns. She manipulates an imaginary soap bubble between his hands. Improvise, adapt, overcome. That's how you beat the street, I remember. I remember Double Tray saying that. It was while we were living between the red hot nukes and the 162s. Crazy ass dwarf anarchists on one side and flesh eating ghouls on the other. Those are the days that you long for? <laughs> long for? No, I was just thinking that it's the same as how it's. Same now as, as it was back then. Uh, it was you and me, Duncan. Those other guys were important, but it was always about you and me. Uh, no... Our priorities were simple. Long for, no. I was just thinking that it's the same now as it was back then. His raspy baritone fills the space between you, bridges it. Survive and watch each other's backs. Yeah, I know. What did you think about that last run? Don't ask me, you didn't take me on that run. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. Need anything else? Alright, talk later. Yeah, later would be good. Don't get me wrong, catching up is nice, but I'm not used to being as social as this. That's one of the reasons why it was so nice to work on the Carter. We both appreciated long silences. Uh, sorry man, she seemed like good people. It's all good, she's gone and I've accepted that. I guess it's just been a long day as well. Anyway, good talk, I'll catch up with you later. I... I think I'm just gonna leave him on the boat for the rest of the game. I don't think I'm gonna take him on any of these missions. <laughs> he's, he's, he really doesn't come across as Shadowrunner material. He doesn't seem like he's a Shadowrunner. Like, he wants to be normal. If you want to be normal, I would just let you be normal. I'm not going to force you to be a Shadowrunner if you don't want to be a Shadowrunner. And he, he doesn't want to be a Shadowrunner, you see what I mean? So... 
I'm just gonna leave him on the boat and not bring him to these missions because he doesn't want to be a shadow runner. That's the that's what I'm getting from talking to him. Right? And like he talks about Yeah, like he keeps saying how, basically that this is not what he wanted. Okay? Then don't do it. If you don't want it, don't do it. I'm not gonna bring him on this missions. 